somewhere, but uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll still be in, but I'll have to switch over. Thank you. Ready. Okay. I'd like to call to order the Pierce Transit Board of Commissioners for the uh, to order for our regular board meeting at 4.02 on, on Monday, May 10th. Clerk, will you please call the roll? Uh, Commissioner Beal? Here. Campbell? Here. Keel? Present. Palmer? Present. Roscoe? Here. Walker? Here. Waylon? Here. Woodard? Here. And Commissioner Mello, is he here yet? I don't see him. I don't see him, but we are expecting him. We okay. can for him. All right. Um, welcome board members, staff, and members of the public. We're happy you could join us this afternoon. And there is Council Member Mello right there. Perfect. Okay, great. Um, I have just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Commissioners, we ask that you keep your camera turned on to maintain the appearance of a quorum and to be captured on the recording of this meeting except during PowerPoint presentations. Please turn your cameras off during the PowerPoint presentation so the presentations can be seen better. Uh, participating staff members, we ask that you keep your camera video off except for when you're speaking or presenting and to keep your mics muted unless you are speaking. Today's meeting will be recorded. Um, special business. Um, the first thing item we're going to take on today under or the, the item we're going to take up today under special business is an update on the CEO recruitment process. And I've asked our recruitment company, our recruitment consultant company, Karis Consulting, to give us uh, regular updates at our board meetings about the current CEO recruitment process. And so today, Dennis Karis is here to give us an update. Dennis, I'll call on you for the update. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Commissioners, thanks so much for taking time from your busy schedules to, uh, to get an update. I'm going to screen share with you. That'll be coming up in a moment. Just a summary of the recruitment and where we are today. Of course, the recruitment is still ongoing, as you well know. But as of today, we have 37 candidates. Um, we've received a lot of interest uh, in either emails or calls from individuals. Of course, we've gone out to hundreds of uh, candidates who we think are potential candidates or would know of potential candidates as well. Uh, geographic location, as you can see in here, in state, we've got uh, 11 candidates and out of state 25. That's not unusual. I've compared that to uh, other um, CEO transit uh, recruitments that we've done, and they're quite similar because this is a position that can be found uh, throughout the country. Uh, we have one out of country candidate. I don't think that we've done a recruitment in the in the last uh, five or six years where we haven't had an out of country candidate. Because even if you're wanting to focus regionally uh, or on one of the, or on the coast, uh, all recruitments are international because they're out on the internet and people throughout the world can see them. Uh, take a look at the educational breakdown of the candidates of the 37. Now this number may not add up to 37 because some individuals may not have degrees, but we've got, uh, nine with their bachelor's, 19 with their master's. We've got uh, four PhDs and, uh, and three lawyers. Uh, diversity is very important to us as it is to you. So we go out to hundreds of different diversity groups and sites. And as of right now, our diversity, uh, black indigenous people of color is uh, just a little bit over 24%. Now that could change as, as we move along because the recruitment's still open. Um, but anyway, just wanted to give you an update on where we are today and happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks, Dennis. And I'm gonna ask, um, um, I'm gonna ask, um, if we, I'm gonna ask you to take the slide down and ask everybody to turn their cameras back on. And then we'll see if we have any questions for you at this time. Are there any questions for our consultant? Dennis, can you just kind of remind us of the timeline? Yeah, we're, um, we're gonna be, the, the recruitment has a soft close date uh, in about a week. Um, we, we like to leave recruitments open until the position's actually filled in case there's some late breaking applicants. And then of course it would be up to you to determine whether or not to try and merge them into the other candidates that you're looking at. Uh, probably about 10 days after that, we'd come to meet with the search committee to go over who it is you'd like to interview. And um, that would be this month as well. 
Um, and then we would hope to schedule interviews, the first round of interviews uh, toward the end, end of the month. Okay, okay. Any additional questions from commissioners? Well, Dennis, your 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 presentation was so thorough. We have no questions. So, so good. We look for, oh yes, go go ahead, go ahead, Commissioner Keel or Commissioner Campbell. Uh, I was just Commissioner Keel had his hand up. I wasn't Sorry, sure. Sorry, Commissioner thought. Keel. I should have I should have put that up. You did raise your hand. Go ahead, Commissioner Keel. I no apologize. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so, uh, Dennis. I know that this may be an unfair question, and I know we'll get into the details more later on. But just from your interviews, just is do you have, do you have some of the in the pile that you like, like whoa, yes, you know this will be a great candidate, or or you know, or all of them kind of eh, okay, you know, kind of what's what's the feel? What well, give me the temperature of the room? That's, I think that's a fair question. Okay. Uh, there are some, I think, some some really strong candidates in the pool, but you know the way the way these recruitments oftentimes work is that you now we have strong candidates now, but toward the end is when you oftentimes get the larger volume of stronger candidates, because we're talking to a lot of people now who are kind of thinking it over. They've got to talk to their families. They've got to kind of wrestle with. Uh, you know, they're happily employed where they are now. They're passive candidates. We reached out to them. They've got to make some decisions. So as we move forward, the pool will, will strengthen. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Right. Thank you. All right. Now that I'm actually looking at the panelists, I don't see any other hands raised. So Dennis, we look forward to, obviously, there will be, you'll be back at our June board meeting, hopefully potential. And we may even be, we may, we probably should have an update of scheduling a couple meetings based on as we get interviews scheduled. Um, it may look like that this board, that the board's interviewing process may have to take place outside of our regular meeting just because of timing. So that's probably something we wanna look at getting scheduled as soon as possible um, so we can get that on everybody's calendars. But thank you, Dennis, uh, so much for the presentation today. And we will let you go and move on with the rest of our agenda. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you very much. Bye. All right. All right, we're now gonna move into presentations and discussions. Our first one is gonna be the 2020 quarter four um, financial update. And I'd now, I'd now like to call on Brett Freshwater, the uh, Executive Director of Finance for the presentation. Brett. Thank you, Chair Woodards and fellow commissioners. Well, now that we have the books closed on 2020, uh, officially, and we will actually be starting the financial audit in the very near future, thought we would just give you a quick update. And of course, I think you have a good general sense of what happened in 2020, but I'll go over a, a few of the numbers and we'll be happy to answer any questions as I go through this. So let me share my screen. Okay, can every, is everybody see the financial status 2024th quarter? We can. Okay, excellent. So we'll take a look at the revenue first. Um, you know, sales tax, as you know, we were very, very concerned at the start of the pandemic back in um, March, uh, over a year ago now. And we thought, wow, you know, <laughs> sky's falling. <laughs> this is gonna be awful. Well, as it turned out, uh, you know, I think everybody is aware it, it uh, was not quite as bad as what we initially thought. However, we did end up about 6% under budget, $5.8 million. Uh, could have been much worse, but uh, after, uh, April and May, things started to pick up. And every month after May, we actually exceeded the collections that we brought in 2019. So 2020, um, after May, was every month was higher than the equivalent month in 2019. So we ended up okay. Uh, not quite as bad. Sound transit reimbursement, you know, reduced hours. Uh, there, so uh, well under budget, 48 million. Fair revenue, same thing. We ended up 56% of our budget. And we had a, about a month and a half or two months, I think, where we actually were not collecting fares at all. 
So this year uh, we have budgeted an increase to that. Uh, so it'll look a little bit better, but still significantly below what we had previously been collecting in fair revenues. The uh, bright spot here, of course, federal and state funds, uh, bulk of that over $20 million is the CARES Act funding that we applied for and received in 2020. We will also be receiving this year uh, our CRISA allocation and after that, an ARPA allocation, the American Rescue Plan Act. We uh, did receive our letter, just a very quick update. We did receive our letter, our official allocation letter from PSRC. And I imagine Sue will probably be talking about that a little bit later, uh, but that will be, I think it's about 27 or 28 million. We do not yet know what the American Rescue Plan amount will be, but we will be applying in the near future for the CRISA funds and should get that later this year. So overall, we actually ended up, uh, thanks to the CARES Act, a little bit over budget on what we had uh, planned for revenue. However, what uh, we're re look, really looking at is not just the one year 2020. We have to look at this our six year plan. And we still have a gap of sales tax between what we had budgeted pre-pandemic to what we're looking at now with a new updated six-year plan of about $50 million over that six years. So, and that's because we're still starting from a lower base on sales tax and projecting out, um, even though it wasn't as much of a drop, it was still a drop from what we had budgeted previously. So that CARES Act revenue, the CRISA revenue, the ARPA revenue that we'll be receiving, basically will go towards operations and will help us, not just short-term, but over the long-term, help us fill that gap in sales tax and fair revenue and in reduced sound transit revenue. Here's a look month by month comparison for 2020 and uh, two prior years for sales tax. You can see a big drop off here in uh, March and April, and then starting May on for the rest of the year, we were ahead of uh, 2019 revenue. On expenditures, of course, we uh, took remedial action very quickly early on in the pandemic, uh, reduced expenditures where we had to. We had furloughs, as you know, uh, we were able to bring back nearly all of the people that we had furloughed maintenance and operations we cut back and, and I think did a very, very good job of expense management throughout the pandemic and even continuing now in our budget for this year. So we ended up 12% under budget, almost uh, about $19 million. And then on our funds, our two other funds besides operating, Workers' comp, as you might imagine, with fewer workers during the year, we had fewer claims. So we were actually well under budget there. Unemployment was higher than what we had planned, although again, not as high as we thought it was going to be. And on top of that, we received a reimbursement, about 250,000, I think it was close to that, from the county, from uh, CARES Act money that uh, they had received for that purpose. So on the net, we were actually pretty close to budget. Overall, then on net income, as I mentioned earlier, we fared a little bit better and our ending reserve balances, we fared better than we had planned because of that. So we ended up on the operating over $72 million on our operating reserve compared to a budget of 39. However, that money then will be used this year and in future years in the six year plan again to make up that gap. A portion of that as well goes to capital uh, to, continue, uh, to continue our capital investment program, base master plan and other necessary capital projects we have uh, to keep our assets up to date and fully functioning. 
Also, just a quick, uh, very brief mention, you also received via email a first quarter report. I'm not really going to uh, review that. However, if you take a look at that, you will see that the first two months of actual sales tax collections for this year have been much better than we had anticipated as well. We were about 10% actually over budget um, in sales tax collections. So that's a very nice um, positive bonus for us. And we don't know if that will continue or not, but we'll be watching that very closely. And depending on what happens then, of course, we'll take that information into account for our budgeting process that we'll be starting in the near future, uh, actually next month for 2022, and using that information to update our forecast for the next six year plan. Be happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you. Thank you, Brett. Um, do we have any questions for Brett? I don't see any hands raised at this point, Brett. Uh, right. Glad we glad we finished out uh, that things weren't as bad as as we thought they were going to be. Um, not not surprised, obviously, by some of the numbers. Um, but I guess I would ask. I know we've not seen first quarter yet. I don't think we probably have first quarter numbers. But are we trending up in terms of fares? Are we are is, is our ridership trending upwards? I think we're still at about 60% okay. of uh, you know, what we normally would be somewhere around there. Okay. Um, you know, we haven't seen a real large uptick yet. Okay. However, I think you're aware with the little bit of a upward um, increase in capacity, the numbers that we can have on a 40 foot coach increased a little bit, but uh, you know, it hasn't gone up really significantly yet. Okay, okay. And then I guess the other question is, um, any thoughts on what we're looking, what first quarter is looking like in terms of um, sales tax? Yes, uh, well, for the first two months, which we have, ex we have actual collections so far for the first two months, and it's looking quite good, uh, better than budget, about 10% better than budget so right. far. Yep. Great. All right. I'm going to call on uh, Commissioner Roscoe. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, thank you, Chair Woodards. Um, with the 103%, remind me, was that just quarter four or was that the full year? That was the full year. Okay. And then is, ha, remind me if any money has been, did, did uh, Pierce Transit expend the anticipated amount of money in 2020? And if not, has there been additions to the reserve accounts, if those exist? Yes, on both accounts. I think, are you asking specifically about the CARES, uh, CARES Act funds that we received? No, well, or, just in no. general, because we're looking, because the presentation indicates that we're at 103% of anticipated revenue, Right, that was because of the CARES Act funding, yes. Right, and then um, have we received information yet on 2020 expenditures? Oh, yes, yes. I uh, went over that very briefly and we were under budget in expenditures. So okay. therefore our net income revenue minus expenditures was uh, significantly better than budget and that was added to reserves. So we ended up reserves higher than what we had planned for. And that money will be used, uh, you know, over the next several years to bridge that gap in uh, sales tax collections that we were originally anticipating pre-COVID. All right. Thank you. Sorry yeah. I missed that. Thank oh, you. Oh, no, pr no problem. You bet. Thank you. All right. I don't see any other questions at this time. So Brett, thank you very much for that. You're presentation. welcome. All right, we're going to move on to item number two, which is operators of the month for January through April. So I'm going to call on Scott Gaines, who's going to introduce our guest today. Scott. Well, hello, members of the board and PT staff. I'm Scott Gaines, uh, Transit Operator Assistant Manager. 
This presentation is the operators of the month for January through April of 2021. Okay, can you see my screen okay? Mm -hmm. You, you might well, there you go. Perfect. There you go. Yeah, so this is my first time uh, sharing my screen on a Zoom meeting. So <laughs> trying to figure it out here. Okay, so like I said, this is uh, for operators of the month for January through April of 2021. So for the month of January 2021, Clay Chowning was the operator of the month. Clay has been with Pierce Transit since 2018. Clay has outstanding uh, attendance. In fact, he only has one absence in his entire career at Pierce Transit. And Clay goes above and beyond to help customers and coworkers. And Clay is so appreciative of the opportunity to serve this wonderful community along such wonderful coworkers. For February, we had uh, Nikolai Jakot. Nikolai has been an operator since 2019, also with outstanding attendance, uh, just a little bit better than Clay. He has uh, no absences, so perfect attendance since he came to Pierce Transit in 2019. And uh, Nikolai was also a 2020 honor roll recipient. Um, his dedication is to provide quality customer service, safety, reliability, and professional attitude toward his customers and the company. For March, Kathy Ross was the operator of the month. Uh, Kathy has been an operator at Pierce Transit since 1994, provides outstanding customer service, uh, which shows with her in her rapport with her passengers and her many compliments that she receives. Kathy always performs her job at a high level and she likes to get people where they need to be who otherwise would not have the ability to do so. And for April, we have Ben Wade. Ben has been an operator with Pierce Transit since 1992. Uh, he has a passion for helping others, which is evident by his many years of working paratransit. Uh, ben has an outstanding attitude. In fact, one of the nominations for Ben uh, cited this positive and uh, attitude and willingness to always uh, do what is needed. Uh, Gen ben genuinely cares about his passengers and appreciates helping them get to their destinations safely and on time. So those are our operators of the month for January through April. We're proud of all of them. Thank you. And I'll try Thank to you. Thank you, Scott. And now you just unshare your screen there. Uh, yes. Uh oh. It went so well until this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Now I can't find my uh stop. Is that any better or no? No, nope, you turned we can't see you, but ah, there you go. You got it. Thank oh, you. Okay. Thank you very much. And thank you to um uh to our um operators of the month. Congratulations. Um on um, on your acknowledgement and know that this board is internally grateful to you all um, for how well you take care of our community um, or your passengers. So thank you all so much and congratulations. All right, at this time, I will open the floor to receive public comment on any matters pertaining to transit. To request to speak during public comment, please press the raise your hand button near the bottom of your Zoom window or press star nine on your phone. Your name or the last four digits of your phone number will be called out when it's your turn to speak. I would like to remind everyone to please keep your comments respectful, relevant, focused, and on topic. You will be given up to three minutes to make your remarks. Um, and it looks like we have two people who have, um, who have raised their hands. And we will start with um, we will start with uh, Julian Weaver. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? We can, Julian. Wonderful. Uh, hi, I'm Julian Wheeler. I am a Lakewood, Washington resident. Uh, I also chair the Pierce County Accessible Communities Advisory Committee, 
And um, we have our regular session meeting coming up tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, May 11, uh, 9 o'clock on Zoom. We are staffed by Pierce County Human Services. And if I had a moment, I would probably provide my email address, but I could do that through other means. Nevertheless, we do welcome input from the public as well as members of staff and elected officials. Uh, and anyone can be a proponent of a, an accessibility project. We act under the mandate of the uh, State Accessible Communities Act of 2010. And we help expedite funding for Pierce County accessibility projects so that we could be accessible to everyone, uh, including but not limited to people with disabilities. Uh, so um, it, we are looking for new members and new ideas as always. And uh, we look forward to uh, further engaging uh, Pierce Transit. And we have had the, uh, the, the blessing of Pierce Transit staff attending our meetings. And I certainly hope that uh, we continue to have that. And in addition to maybe even having a, um, a project uh, from Pierce Transit. Uh, if anything didn't make the final cut for a budget uh, and it had to do with accessibility feel, well, you could uh, recharacterize it as an accessibility project for our purposes, bring it to us. There is some intake and I can't guarantee the outcome of our votes, but certainly if we vote to expedite, we'll, take, we'll send it up to the governor's committee on disability issues and employment to their accessible communities subcommittee for their final disposition. Anyway, thank you. And um, um, I don't want to say it's uh, looking really sunny outside because I, I want to make sure that you're getting your fulfillment with this meeting. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Commissioner Mayor. Thank you, Julian. Thank you so much for being here. All right. I'd now like to call on uh, Laura Flavkarik or is, Laura, help me. <laughs> I, just, I just butchered your last name. That's okay. It's one zero. Thank you so much. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Uh, thank you, Board of Commissioners. My name is Laura Swanzerich. Uh, I am a Tacoma resident and a Pierce, uh, a Pierce Transit writer. Um, I'm here representing Downtown On The Go. Um, can spam calls at the same time. Um, I'm here representing Downtown On The Go. We are Tacoma's advocate and resource for all things transportation. Um, I'm commenting today to express our support for a Pierce Transit ballot measure asking voters for a 0.3% sales tax increase. Um, for many people in Pierce County, public transportation is a lifeline. Uh, it's a connection to work, services, community, and so much more. Uh, Pierce County residents deserve a transit system which is frequent, accessible, affordable, and convenient to use. This funding from this ballot measure, uh, should it pass, um, would increase transportation equity in Pierce County. Um, studies have shown that low-income families and people of color are more likely to use public transportation, biking and walking um, to meet their daily needs. This funding would allow for a significant increase in service hours, uh, the development of more BRT routes, uh, new routes to better connect communities. All of this makes it easier for every person in Pierce County to access things like healthier foods, uh, more employment and educational opportunities, healthcare and community events. Um, additionally, more comprehensive public transportation coverage um, helps Pierce County to fight climate change by making transit a more viable option for more folks, um, reducing our reliance on personal and single occupancy vehicles. Uh, transportation is the highest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions in the Puget Sound region, and it has been shown that these pollutions are disproportionately impacting, um, once again, low-income communities and communities of color. This can be a step towards addressing these inequalities. For all these reasons and more, this additional funding would bring so many benefits to Pierce County. Um, and we sincerely hope that the board um, will move forward with this ballot measure. We're very excited to help support this measure um, all the way to the November election, however we can. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lauren. Thank you so much for being here today. All right, with that, I see no other hands raised. So seeing no further people who have expressed interest in speaking during public comment, I will declare the public comment period closed and we'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, items listed below were distributed to commissioners in advance for reading and study and are, and are enacted with one motion. Um, items may be moved to the, to the action agenda at the request of a commissioner. 
There is no discussion on, on consent agenda items. And if an item is moved to the action agenda, a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended would be in order. I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Move consent agenda as presented. Second. All right. Thank you. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The consent agenda is declared approved. Moving on to the action agenda. We'll start with item number one, FS 2021-023. Will the clerk please read the title aloud? Authorizing the chief executive officer to execute a multi-year express bus service operations and maintenance interagency agreement with Sound Transit for Pierce Transit to continue to operate Regional Sound Transit Express Service through December 31, 2027, pursuant to the agreement set, set forth in Exhibit A. All right, I'd like to call on Mike Griffiths, Chief Chief Operations Officer. And, and, and hold on, uh, uh, Commissioner Campbell, I'm gonna pass you the gavel for a moment. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Chair Woodard, uh, Commissioner, staff and guests. In addition, um, on the phone, today is Tamara Good, who's the contract administrator for Pierce Transit and handled the negotiations, facilitated it for Sound Transit uh, for us. And I just wanted to uh, say she did an excellent job of uh, keeping us on track with this. So Tamara, thank you. Today's request is to approve an interagency agreement authorizing the CEO to enter into and execute uh, an agreement with Sound Transit for express bus service. In 1999, Pierce Transit and Sound Transit entered into an agreement to start up, operate, and maintain ST Express Bus Service in Pierce County, and we've been operating under agreements with Sound Transit since that time. Our current agreement was updated in 2015. We extended this agreement for six, six months last year through June 30th, 2021, due to uncertainties of service volume as a result of the pandemic. The term of the new agreement will cover a base of four and one half years with two additional one year options. And I can share my screen here so that you can see this. It's only one slide. And so, um, this agreement covers all essential elements of bus operations and maintenance in a turnkey manner. Sound Transit furnishes the vehicles and participates in Pierce Transit capital projects. We currently operate 104 Sound Transit Express buses on 13 routes. Um, our goals here were to ensure the cost allocation model fully compensates Pierce Transit and that it's revenue neutral. Um, Sound Transit has agreed to participate with Pierce Transit on base modifications uh, through proportionate share agreements. And Sound Transit will make a one-time contribution of $9.1 million uh, for past use and land acquisition that uh, Pierce Transit made over the years. Um, there are other enhancements to the agreement such as enhanced data sharing, better transparency, updated reporting requirements, improved Title VI and ADA language, joint continuous improvement efforts, sustainability, collaboration, and service flexibility. And I'd like to add that the state of the partnership with Sound Transit is very good. The contract was approved May 6th by the Sound Transit Ridership Experience and Operations Committee. And if approved here, we'll go to the full ST board on May 27. And now I would take your questions. Okay, thank you. Any questions from commissioners? All right, I'm not seeing any questions. I always give everyone a moment here to uh, check in. Um, so uh, just picking up here. Um, we have a motion and a second uh, to approve FS 2021-23. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Chair, Chair Excuse Campbell. Me. We need yep, a motion. Up, up, up. 
I don't think we oh. have a motion. I'm sorry. We do I'm need a motion I, and second, yes. My apologies. <laughs> Thank you for stopping me. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve FS 2021-23. Here, this mm -hmm. is Commissioner Roscoe. I will make a motion to approve FS 2021-023. Second. Okay, uh, moved by Commissioner Roscoe, seconded by Commissioner Walker. Any further discussion before we go to the voice, voice vote? Vice Chair Campbell, I just want to recognize that this does seem to be a good indication of the cooperation that Sound Transit and Pierce Transit can often come to on issues like this. Thank you. I would agree. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion is approved unanimously. Uh, thank you very much. Well, thank you for your uh, report. All right. Uh, next up, uh, FS 2021-24. Clerk, will you please read the title aloud? Uh, direct staff to schedule a special board meeting in June to consider whether to proceed with a formal ballot measure in November 2021 for additional sales tax for increased bus service. All right, Mr. Ryan Wheaton, Executive Director of Planning and Community Development. Thank you, Vice Chair and Commissioners. I'm going to bring up this presentation. Is that coming through for you? Yes, it is. Excellent. Well, this is no new topic to everybody here. We've been talking about this for a little over a year in depth and not to belabor the point of the plan that we put forward, but today we want to ask for a consideration that we come back at a special meeting in June. And I'll explain how we got to that decision. Uh, talking about three things. First, we'll review very briefly the plan that you've seen a couple of different times since our board retreat in March. Second, we'll do an overview of the, the main highlights and takeaway points from our recent Pierce County uh, survey that we did to, to look at our community involvement when their perspective of how Pierce Transit is doing. And then third, talk about what the timeline looks like for a successful ballot measure. As we've discussed a few times, the path to us providing better service really requires a look at new revenue. We are by law allowed to go up to 0.9% sales tax. As you know, we're currently at 0.6%. And what we're looking to do is ask people in our service area if they would be willing to increase in a phased approach. As we talked about at our board retreat, we simply can't put out all the service that we plan to at full build initially because it's going to take a while to procure buses, hire and train staff, and get the planning in place to provide a seamless and successful rollout of that additional revenue. So what we're looking at would be in year one, asking for an increase in sales tax of 0.2%, taking the Pierce Transit portion to 0.8% total. And then in year three, increasing our sales tax that last 0.1% to bring the Pierce Transit local bus, uh, local transit sales tax to 0.9%. And as we talked about before, we're looking at just under half of that additional revenue going toward more frequent trips, about a quarter to new routes. And the balance would be between increased hours, recovery from our current level of the, the drawdown that we had during COVID, and then the free rides for youth and seniors that we discussed at the board retreat. This hasn't changed since when we talked uh, last month we're looking at an additional 43 new miles of routes uh, going in both directions that would help us to provide more service. And what this looks like is an overall increase to about 735,000 uh, service hours, taking Pierce Transit to its largest number of local bus service hours we've ever done. That would also increase the amount of trips. So frequency and span and new routes here increase the option or options for trips that people have in our service area over 40%. And all told, this would bring 15% of the county, or excuse me, increase the amount of our service area that is within a quarter mile of Pierce Transit service, 15%. On the right, you see the map that we discussed before. So we have included operational hours for BRT Route 2, 
a new route, 51, that would travel between downtown Tacoma and Lakewood Town Center utilizing Tyler, and then a long overdue route on Portland Avenue that would stretch from Parkland Transit Center all the way through the port and uh, ultimately to 10th and Commerce. We've also included an extension of the Route 11, so a little bit of a reroute to serve Point Ruston, and then some micro transit or on-demand zones at the Port of Tacoma, part of Midland, and then uh, chunks of Spanaway and Parkland that we saw success during our lift project. The survey that we conducted through EMC research was done uh, after our last meeting, and this was very similar to what we looked at in 2019. So we surveyed 600 respondents from within our current service area that are representative of the demographics that we not only see in our service area, but that EMC expects to see at the 2021 ballot. It was important for us to get out and get as many uh, people as we could. So this was done both over the phone and uh, on a, in an online survey format. The margin of error here was 4%. And we asked a, a number of questions that pertain to satisfaction and how people see Pierce Transit as an agency and a service they get. We also asked some generic questions related to a ballot measure. The first question that I want to highlight is an overall uh, take on what the community thinks we should do with bus transit or bus service. And you see here, we did have a drop of 7% in overall support when we asked people if they wanted to see an increased level of service. It's important to note though that over two thirds of the people still see the importance of having some form of additional service, whether that be the 32% that want to expand the bus as much as possible or the 35 that think we need a little more bus service. It's also important to note that only one in five people surveyed, and this was the entire uh, 600 people that were asked, of one in five think that we don't need any more bus service. The other graphic we wanna show is uh, a series of questions and when was a, a good portion of the survey time that was taken. This is a series of three different questions. People were asked how, they, how, how much they can support uh, a vote for a potential ballot measure. And you can see here, we asked it three different ways. First, we provided some very generic language that sounds similar to what somebody might read on a ballot. So while not a specific ballot measure, it was generic enough talking about how a potential ballot measure in 2021 by Pierce Transit would allow the agency to collect up to 0.3% sales tax that would go toward more equitable transit funding, uh, provide new routes, more frequent service and longer hours in the day. So no specifics here, just generic overview. And when we asked that, we saw 52% support, 46% opposed and the balance of being people that said they didn't know. The surveyors then introduced the cost information and it was a pretty simple statement that just note, noted that that 0.3% equates to three cents on every $10 purchase. And when we asked it that way, we saw support drop and opposition increase. So you saw a 3% either direction, so 6% change or swing overall. And then the final time it was asked, we preempted that by providing information about what the improvements might be. So we talked about what equitable transit uh, could do, bus rapid transit. We discussed uh, components of the, the plan that were a little more in depth without going into complete detail uh, that you've seen in your last few presentations. And when we asked that, we did see a rebound back up to 56% support and 43% opposed. Some key findings or takeaways from the survey, we do think that there is support overall for the concept of better transit service. We do think that there is a need to provide pretty strong messaging around the value of public transit, in particular, local bus service. Uh, while more than two thirds, as we mentioned, support expanding bus uh, public transit, we do note that the priorities that people ranked uh, in other parts of the survey, they didn't quite see as much of an emphasis, we didn't see as much of an emphasis on congestion, traffic, and public transit as we have in years past. We think that in large part that has to do with people not traveling as much in the last year, uh, commuting for, uh, for work. We did note that uh, 
there is a sense of people feeling like they're taxed already. We get this response every time we ask questions around uh, potential sales tax measure for Pierce Transit. So it wasn't surprising, but it is something that if we do go out for a ballot measure in the near future, we will certainly have to express what that value of transit is. There are some pockets uh, when we broke down the demographics where we do see some pretty high levels of support. With that being said, uh, in parts of the, the county and for some demographics, that support it really flips on its head. So we do note that we have some work to do in getting the word out to specific groups, but then also we think as, uh, as the service area as a whole is looking for uh, how they're going to proceed out of everything that's gone on last year, we aren't sure at what point we're going to see that turn. So this is one of those aspects that when we worked with the MC to identify these key takeaways, they did point out they're not sure if we're out of the weeds yet or if, if we're still, uh, still seeing some of the, the drawbacks to what everybody felt in last year. And then the last note here for a takeaway is that we did see some components of this plan that uh, while different from last, uh, last year, we're actually more successful. So that rebound that we saw from the second question where we told people the cost to here are the improvements, the rebound or the bounce there was actually better than we expected. And, and I think that the plan that we put forth this year certainly resonated more with uh, respondents that did in the past. This is one of those things that uh, typically we come to you and we're the experts on public transit. We're talking about ballot measures. So staff at Pierce Transit are no experts compared to the knowledge that our board has. So we're going to put forward what we think is our recommended best path for success with the caveat that in a minute, I'll be done talking and you all are going to have an opportunity to discuss the merits of going forward. So we think uh, that the best possible avenue for us to look at a successful ballot measure is holding off until either November this year or November of next year. Certainly, as many of you uh, discussed in the last couple of meetings, we want to be successful and we were really looking forward to having a good opportunity in August to get a quick win and help people get the connections that they need. And we're not sure that it's there right now. So with that being said, if we decide to go forward in August, we will get everything ready, but it is in very short order because that information needs to be turned in pretty soon. What you see in front of you is a timeline for us to not just get to this November and be successful, but a potential timeline for us to go back out to voters outside of our service area and invite them back in next year. So what that would look like is you calling for us to put a special meeting forward in June. At that June meeting, we will consider what things have changed. If we feel that there is continued progress in Pierce County, and do we think that we can put forward the effort needed to be successful in November? For that, we're going to rely, uh, I think, quite a bit on what you're hearing and how your, your cities are feeling. But certainly the work that we need to do internally, we can do in time. So if we get the direction then, we would come back in July with the resolution to put that ballot measure forward for November. And then from that point through August 9th, we would go through the formal steps to putting everything forward to the county that we need to get this ballot measure forward. Successful ballot measure in November means that we are pushing phase one out in January of 2022. And again, phase one is free rides for youth and seniors. Phase two would start in March 20, or excuse me, March of 22. And at that point, if we are doing another board retreat, that would be a good opportunity for us to do a real deep dive into what a PTBA or a service area expansion looks like for Pierce Transit. Phase two uh, would then uh, be followed by a sales tax increase. So that first increase would actually take place in April of next year. And then if you decide that you wanna go out for an August ballot, we would be here a year from now discussing what that looks like. If it ends up being sooner, we could move the timeline up or we could obviously push it back. So I'm gonna leave this up uh, and I'll make sure that we send it over to you. I'll pull it down when uh, we start talking, 
but we do, we know that uh, we're pushing for this hard. We wanna see this be successful. So your decision that you have tonight, if you wanna move forward with one date or another, or if you want specific information brought back or further presentations, we can put all those together. But we are excited to continue to work on this. Obviously expanding transit and transforming things for local bus riders is uh, the focus that we've had for the last couple of years. Okay, <clears throat> just going to check in with Chair Woodard, see if she's made it back. She's not, so I'll continue uh, chairing here. Um, thank you, Mr. Wheaton, for the presentation, and uh, thank you, Sue. I know you've put a lot of work into bringing this together. I'm going to just uh, act, pull, pull acting chair's prerogative a little bit here and give some of my comments first. Um, and uh, for those who've spoken with me, uh, you know that... Uh, um, I, we should have gone out last year and it was, uh, um, I know many, a lot of you are new and it was, uh, frankly, when we were at a decision point was right when COVID hit. And so we backed off in hindsight, it would have been a great time to go. Um, and we, uh, uh, by all accounts would have probably been very successful. Uh, can't go back and undo that. What we can do is move forward. Uh, for me, as uh, judiciously as possible. Um, when we look at the map of the new service areas, we talk about the PTBA, we're literally talking about extending service uh, over the next couple of years with these couple ballot measures uh, or ballot measure and uh, PTBA vote of bringing service to hundreds of thousands of people. Um, areas like Midland, uh, parts of East Tacoma, uh, the Port of Tacoma have, have you know, long really been uh, wanting this. Personally, I, I'm, and this is the old entrepreneur in me that is, you know, move quick and move with uh, 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 authority, uh, would like to look at August, but I'm open to really the will of the board um, uh, uh, and can understand and really appreciate where staff's at. And uh, I think you guys really uh, have a good recommendation here. I would like to consider August of this year, but I'd like to hear from some of the board members whether they think August or November is better. Um, so with that, I will now be quiet and allow everyone space to speak. Well then, not all at once. Council member, uh, Commissioner Mello. Thank you, Vice Chair Campbell. Um, uh, I too add my gratitude. Staff has done a lot of work to help us uh, think about how we improve our transit system. And th that is, it's a tremendous amount of planning and thinking and listening. Uh, I, I really like this package. I, I really like what we're um, hopefully going to be talking to voters about how to improve their access to opportunity. I think we're putting forward the, the right mix of things, um, everything from expanded span of service so that folks who work different shifts late into the night, earlier in the morning, can have better access to opportunity. Uh, buses can come more frequently so people can have more certainty to choose this as a mode, uh, not just be standing in the cold or the rain for half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, the new routes, I think, are incredibly thoughtful based on years of listening and years of previous planning. Um, I get excited about the ride-free measures for seniors and youth. Uh, this, this package is just really, really thoughtful. It's, it's exciting. I would be excited to do my part to go talk to voters, to ask them to invest in the system like this um, so that we can get people, more people to work, more people to school. I, I think that, you know, I, I think the timing will be um, right as well. I feel like, I think this is a good bet in terms of planning. I, I hear you, Vice Chair Campbell. Um, I, I know you're incredibly eager to, the, the longer we wait, the longer people wait for service. And I totally hear you. I think this is the, I think this proposal is the right move, the November electorate. I think it gives us a little bit more distance from COVID. More people's lives will be out and about more. Um, American Rescue Plan will be in full effect. Uh, I, I think that, you know, even more people will be back to work. I already think, you know, we already see a lot of people back to work. There'll be even more people back to work. The American Rescue Plan will be doing its magic to give people even more confidence in the economy. 
But, and, but I, I don't think we can wait, right? We, we've seen lots of things come in front of us, good, good things. Um, uh, uh, other sales tax measures, there'll probably be um, uh, future gas tax measures. The, the longer we wait, the longer, you know, the, the more other things, um, we start competing for more and more space in voters' minds. So um, I, for lots of reasons, I'm excited about the package, excited to talk to voters about the package. And I think the November, 2021 date, well, is the right, it, it, is the right one for a lot of reasons that I have already expressed. So um, I would encourage us to schedule a special meeting in June so we can just focus on this and only this and make a decision uh, together. Um, I don't need any more information. I've asked for a lot of information. I've asked staff for a couple of briefings. And so I've, I've sat with the information quite a bit. Um, and I personally think that us sitting together with just focusing on the detail of this in June is the right next step. So thank you, Vice Chair Campbell. Thank you, Commissioner Mello. Commissioner Walker. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, thank you, Ryan, for the presentation, the very concise presentation. Um, I am uh, also supportive of having that June meeting and giving ourselves time and space to discuss. I had one clarifying question, Ryan. Um, you had, I think, said at some point in uh, when, when you mentioned the June meeting that we would then be able to reevaluate or, or evaluate what information we had there. Are we expecting additional information before that June meeting um, to help in our decision? Like, would there be an additional survey like if the economy has changed by then? We don't anticipate doing one. If, if that's the direction of the board, we could certainly put one together. More act anecdotal, what are what is the what are the rev like it's not just anecdotal what do uh, sales tax receipts look like what is the economy doing in the next month obviously it's a short time frame but we're hoping to get some input from cities as well so as we go out and we have a month to do some work and that would include us going out and talking to city staff and getting their input as well okay great thanks for that clarification that i think that makes sense and um i it, it is a short time frame but i think that additional um info from cities will be really helpful. So yeah, looking forward to continuing the conversation, um, really supportive of um, that June conversation and, and leaning towards being supportive of, of a November ballot measure, you know, for all the reasons that have been mentioned by both the, the public speakers earlier and my colleagues. Um, we can't wait any longer to improve the system and just add more transit service to our most needy members of our community. And I think to Ryan, the presentation that you gave really shows um, what this community gained from a ballot measure. And, and I think that that will read well. Um, looking forward to further discussion. Thank you. All right, any other additional comments or questions? Uh, Mr. Wheaton, as I understand it, if we did want to go in August, we'd need that motion today to go August. Today is, is the, the deadline on that. Um, or we would do a motion to come back in June to bring uh, a, a little more you know, discussion and a little more answers to look at a November one. Um, Commissioner, Commissioner oh. uh, Ryan, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. I see Commissioner Keel has unmuted. So uh, I'm assuming you might have a question or comment here. I do. I have a comment. Uh, can am I off? Am I off? Yes. Yep. Okay. Good. So, um, Ryan, thanks for your presentation, and um, I, I share um, the understanding and, and the need and the desire to expand um, transit. Uh, you know, for Pierce County. In fact, I'm very much uh, excited about expanding expanding transit for for this three county region. So, I mean that that's that's the stuff that I do, and and, and I'm very excited about making all of that happen. Um, the 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 thing that keeps me tossing, turning in bed at night is is making sure that we as proponents of public transportation are doing the things that, that are necessary, not in our own minds, but in the minds of the people that we serve. And uh, what sticks out of my mind in Pierce County is the survey that we just paid a lot of money for 
uh, from a company that does really good work around surveys and, and reading, you know, kind of the reading the room type of thing. And, and the information that we got from them was is that the folks that we serve aren't with us and don't share, uh, not everybody, but the vast majority does not share the, the, the understanding that they need to pay for, and that's the key phrase, they need to pay for um, this expanded uh, transportation that we know that they need. And, and so I, I'm concerned about that. And so what I was hoping for in our uh, way forward was a double down concentrated effort on education uh, to um, the county, the riders, the public, and not only the riders, but more so the people that don't ride transportation, transit, right? I think that's the group that is that needs the education uh, and needs to understand that even though they don't ride or they choose not to ride for whatever reason, um, having a robust, a more robust trans public transportation system helps them. I don't think they get that. And, and I think that there will be a hard no on anything that we put forward. And then I go back to the two times before we tried this, right? It was both times very close, but you know, no, 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 no cigar. I mean, we, we didn't get it. And so, uh, I mean, I think about the definition of, you know, you know, uh, of insanity, you know, you know, doing the same thing over expecting the same different result. And, and what I would hope to get a different result is not to do the same thing. And what would not be the same thing is that we have a concentrated effort, a marketing effort or whatever you want to call it, informational effort to that specific large group of people that aren't transit riders that think that they don't need to have transit. You know, they got their car, they got this, they got other means of getting around and they don't need public transportation. But having some type of a marketing effort to them that shows them how a real more robust transit system is uh, beneficial to them, and, and and give them the the um, the reason to vote yes. I think without that, uh, we're going to get close again, but it's going to fail. Thank you, okay. Commissioner Keel. And before I hand it back over to the chair, uh, just to you know, comment from my perspective, agreeing with uh, much that's been said here. I do see a nine point. You know, at the end, after all the information is there, a nine point uh, margin, which in many areas would be a landslide. But I do agree that we're it, either, no matter if we go August, November, it's going to be a lot of information, getting a lot of information out to a lot of people to really see the value of transit, uh, you know, in our county where we serve, in our county where we have the opportunity to serve, and uh, then how it all works across cross county, you know, the three county region as uh, uh, Commissioner Keel says, because that's going to be part of the conversation, um, whether we want it to be or not. And I think that we uh, talked to the benefits of a second BRT route. We talked to some of those. So uh, with that uh, uh, pending no motion on the floor at this moment, Chair, I will hand it back over to you. All right, great. So I've heard part of the discussion. I am assuming that um, that it, or what I, what, I, what I kind of overheard is that if we're going to move forward, we would move forward with a um, direct staff to schedule a special board meeting in June is what I heard. So I will entertain a motion to direct staff to, um, um, to well, to actually what's been read aloud. So I would to direct staff to consider, um, to direct staff to schedule a special board meeting in June to consider whether to proceed with a formal ballot measure in November, 2021, um, for additional sales tax for increased bus, bus service. So with that, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All right, great. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, uh, the motion is approved. Moving on to item number three, FS 2021-025. Will the clerk please read aloud? Uh, yes. Um, approve, approval of resolution number 2021-006, updating the community use ban program and directing staff to proceed with the implementation. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I'd now like to call on Penny Growler, uh, Community and Development Administrator. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Chair Woodard. So I'll just share my screen here. May I have verbal confirmation? You can see my first slide. You can. Great, thank you. Well, uh, good evening, commissioners, um, staff, and guests. Um, I'm Penny Grelier with our Community Development Department, and I am here tonight asking for your approval to update our community use van program so that we can get vans back in service. So over the past few months, our sales and outreach team, of which I'm a member, has noted an increase in requests for transportation options. Uh, there are also several um, requests have come in for new kinds of transportation, identifying needs that have arisen out of pandemic conditions. As a quick refresher, we've had a number of van-based programs on offer over the last few years. One is our van pool and van share program, in which PT Pierce Transit owns and maintains the vans and provides them to commute use situations. We also had our caravan program where surplus vehicles were provided free of charge to nonprofits in which the recipient owns and maintains the van. And then lastly, for about the last 15 years, we've had a community use van program. Pierce Transit owns and maintains those vehicles, but they uh, prove to be hard to sell to the community in that they cost $500 a month with a 50 cent per mile fee and there is not any dedicated marketing or promotion plan to that program. So you may like to note that over the last 15 years, we've only had seven vans active through the community use program. So why are we looking to update this program? Well, as I mentioned, the existing program can prove to be cost prohibitive, especially to nonprofit organizations who have a need. What we'd like to do is present a simple mileage rate that is easy for us to promote when we're out and about in the community and affordable for a wide range of organizations and businesses. This will be particularly useful in areas that don't have fixed route transit right now, but need options. Pierce Transit, as you know, has van pool vehicles that have been sidelined for the pandemic. So this presents an opportunity to get some of those vans back on the road. Businesses and agencies need non-commute transportation um, options. So in other words, they may not be looking to have people coming to and from work, but have a variety of other needs where a van would be an effective solution. Here then are the details of our proposed upgrade. The new features would be that we would ask for a dollar and seven cents per mile flat fee. This uh, represents both the indirect and direct costs. The agency uh, to support a van, it costs our agency $1.59. We'd also make the vans available for short or long-term use. Uh, of note here is that, for example, our van pool cost recovery is 65%. With this proposed upgrade to the community use van program, the cost recovery would be 67%, so comparable to van pool. The benefits of this program or that we could provide a solution to underserved areas from which we get a number of requests, such as the Key Peninsula outside of Gig Harbor and also the Fredrickson area. This would be available to members of a given community or organization as defined by their agreement with us. And it would be more accessible to those organizations who have a limited budget. It would also present some revenue generation for Pierce Transit. So the next steps then are that we seek approval tonight from you. We would upgrade, update our existing agreement for the community use van program and update the procedures so it appeals to a broad audience. We determine a name for the program so that we begin developing and implementing a marketing and communications plan so that they know this program is available. And then we would set up the administration of this program with our business support team and those are the folks that handle our van pool. This program would be similar to van pool in that we would ask that whoever utilizes a van transports passengers and doesn't use it for cargo or goods transportation. We would have the van 
drivers meet all of the requirements and training that our van pool drivers must meet. And Pierce Transit would provide the fuel, the maintenance and insurance for the program. We're currently working with the Washington State Transit Insurance Pool and our risk department on updating the insurance coverage for this program, thinking about the different kinds of transportation needs that have been expressed to us of late. That concludes my presentation and I'm open to questions. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Penny, for that presentation. Do we have any questions for Penny? Christina Walker. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Penny. I just have a couple of clarifying questions. So um, does this existing program then, or this proposed program, the new one that we would be voting on moving forward on, does this then replace both of the previous programs, so the caravan and that monthly? So this would be an update of the uh, existing community use van program, the one that was $500 a month and 50 cents a mile. Um, the caravan program was put on hiatus early on in the pandemic, and I'm not sure that we um, will see it come back in the near future, simply because there are a number of factors at play, such as having vehicles that have been surplus available uh, for donation, and where the funding for those vehicles that are surplus has come from. There's some uh, complications around if it's federal or state money that supported the van in the first place and so forth. So this would be something that I think would appeal to those who um, may in the past have asked for a caravan, as well as um, some others who have maybe more money available for transportation and need more vans out in the community. Okay, great. Thank you for that clarification. As you know, because I've emailed you before that I get uh, asked about caravans a lot. Um, my other question is how long the commitment is. Can people do this, you commit to a couple months or is it a year long commitment? Yeah, we're determining that just now. What we, what we want to do is make it a value to kind of a broader audience. So for example, we have some programs that um, I've partnered with on the caravan program who do um, winter time, let's say homeless outreach programs. So they would perhaps want the van for a three, four or five month period. And then in the summer, you know, their services aren't needed like taking blankets out to homeless folks and things like that. Um, then there are others who um, have kind of seasonal type services that they would like to utilize this van for. So we want to be sure that um, we're not crossing over into like special events territory because that um, can be involved in kind of some other charter regulations and such. Um, but we're, we're thinking about, you know, would we have like a three month minimum commitment? We'd like it to be month to month if possible. We just want to make sure that we're not having vans go out there for, you know, one or two time use and then they're sitting idle. Gotcha. Thank you. Well, appreciate that um, flexibility. And that was kind of my, my question or where I was getting at as well as kind of those one time things. So thank you. Really appreciate this. It, it looks like a great program. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. Go right ahead, Ken. Okay, great, thank you. So, uh, Penny, thanks for your presentation um, as well. Uh, it, it certainly looks like a program that is definitely needed, um, you know, for, um, and I commend you guys for, you know, modifying and adapting to uh, the changing requirements that are out there amongst folks. So that that's all very good question I have is around what is it, what type of an approval are you seeking from us today? I mean, it, it sounds like you're looking for approval. And the reason I'm asking that is, is listening to your presentation, it sounds like there still is quite a few other things that you're still researching and trying to figure out that you have to complete before the program is ready for prime time, I mean, like rolling it out. And so my question, I, I'm, I'm I'm a little bit reticent from if this is a approval to say go forward with the program um, because there's other things that you guys need to work out like you know some policies procedures and, and there's a couple other things that you said that you're working on that kind of caught my eye and my ear that mm, maybe this is not quite ready yet and and 
of the things you listed that you had to work on as a as a commissioner i'd like to have another bite at the apple to find out okay what were the answers to the things that you're working on to see if those things fit into where we would want to go and does that make sense yes it does um we actually um have uh agreement form you know that we've had in place with our community use program for the over the years and what we're just doing now is making adjustments to that um, as reflected in the, the comments so it would be something that um, we would put together and then take uh, to our for legal review to make sure that it you know meets kind of general Pierce transit muster um, so I think you know we it's a case of having kind of the the basic program already there. We just want to make it more appealing to the general public uh, to try and get more people utilizing it. But um, if, of course, it's at the board's preference as to how we proceed. Um, I'm just thinking about uh, bringing it to you today because of the fact that I have a, a list of probably 10 or so community organizations who've been calling about, you know, what's happening with Caravan and what else do you guys have? So, you know, I'm eager to put something together, but we want it to be a quality program, you know, of course, so we can get those vans out. to the public. Yeah, no, and, and I got that and I, and I appreciate it. And I agree. It, it just seemed like there was, there, there was the, the approval. If this is the end all go do it approval seemed a little bit today seemed a little bit premature in as yeah. much as there was, there's other things that you're doing that, I would like to get the output from before we got the go ahead and do it approval from from my perspective. Great, thanks, Commissioner Keel. Commissioner Roscoe. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair and Penny. I'm looking at the packet <clears throat> on page two fifty six, and I see that the direct cost is a dollar fifty nine, which I think you noted in the presentation. And that right now, or as in 2019, there was a 70% direct cost recovery. And fuel costs are listed separately. Are, is, that a sep is that above and beyond the direct costs? So, so what we would be looking at is recovering our direct and indirect costs by charging the $1 and seven cents a mile. Right. So and that I just would am trying to, the so fuel. what I'm trying to understand is the 2019 figures. So on page 256, it says that it is a dollar fifty nine per mile, direct, indirect capital. But fuel for mm -hmm. some reason is listed separately. So why is that for 2019? Um, I'm just, I'm wondering if that's to do with our existing community van program. Um, From my impression, I'll this is the 2019 figures. Yeah, um, I'll have to get clarification on that um, to figure out exactly where that's come from. Okay, so if you could get back to me on that. So if we were going to go, if, if fuel is rep, represented in that dollar fifty nine figure and direct cost recovery is seventy percent. From my calculation, a dollar fifty nine times point seven is a dollar eleven per mile. Um, so I am definitely in favor of putting something out there, even if we consider it a pilot program. and um, that I am in support of this resolution because I think putting vans back in service is the best thing that we can do for folks to gain momentum back for this program in whatever way it may eventually come back. I just do want to understand the financial figures of what that meant, why the fuel was listed separately, and then why wasn't a dollar eleven considered? I know it's just a couple cents. I'm just wondering, I guess, and I'm sorry if you if I missed it, why was the the dollar figure that we're considering, why was that one chosen? I think we looked at a range of um, possible fees to charge. Like, did we want to charge the whole $1.59 
to cover, you know, capital indirect and, and direct. And then we looked at the figures from other transit agencies who have similar programs and tried to come up with something that we felt was was fair. So we thought if we cover the direct and indirect costs, that would be kind of on par with what neighboring agencies were um, offering. All right, thank you. Thank you, Chair. All right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Beal. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Penny. Uh, no, I think this program looks really great. I don't really have any questions. Um, I definitely trust you guys to, uh, you know, go out and respond to the community feedback we've gotten and the questions we've gotten about the use of the vans. And, um, you know, I think just any kind of report back um, as the timeline goes along and as you see successes or challenges is fine. But I, when I look at this, I just see it as such a small um, drop in the bucket in terms of our overall service delivery package. And it seems to me like um, staff's bringing forward creative options to respond to community needs. So I'm appreciative that you brought this forward and support the resolution and just wanted to say thank you. Great, thank you, Commissioner Beal. Are there any other comments at this time? No. All right, so I, I've heard a couple of things and I guess I need to, to there, there, seems, there seems to be some who are ready to move forward. There's some questions about if there's more information that we need before we move forward. Um, nope, everybody's okay moving forward and getting the information on the back end. Okay, great, I just wanted to, I just wanted to double check and make sure I was hearing things right. So I will entertain a motion then. Chair, I will make a motion that we um, approve FS 2021-025, uh, which is the authority to update the community use, use van program and direct staff to implement. Great, thank you. Second. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Um, no. And for the reasons I was trying to say in my comments, I, it was kind of fast. I, I, I'm i very supportive of the program. I think it needs to go forward. It just it just seems like there's just a couple more questions that I'd like to know about, you know, that, that isn't quite done yet. So, gotcha. Um, yeah. And so Penny, while it looks like this will, while it looks like this will pass both Penny and Sue, I think maybe answering the questions that Commissioner Keel brought forward and coming back in a couple months just to update us on, on or when it seems broke, come back and update us on how we're implementing this and how it's actually going as it relates to some of the question, questions that were raised by Commissioner Keel and others would be helpful. Okay, I can definitely do that. Thank right. you. Thank you. All right. Um, seeing, seeing, uh, uh, seeing no more votes, the motion is approved. Um, moving on to staff updates and discussions, I'd like to call on Sue Dreyer for the CEO's report. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Boy, I haven't, I haven't spoken all meeting. I've got to warm up my voice here. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, nice to see everybody tonight. So um, just a couple quick updates because I had just sent a written update recently. Um, for those of you who have been around Lakewood and past our headquarters, you'll notice some real changes that are becoming really evident now um, as we move forward with our maintenance and operations um, improvements. So the at this point, the building, um, the new visitors parking lot and the disabled parking has been completed. That's in front of the main building. That work will now get underway for the new fuel and bus washing station. So before we can accomplish that though, the contractors need to relocate the electric bus chargers, bus charging stations. So they have already bored under the bus lot entrance to bring power to the new electric bus charging area along 96th Street. And when finished, we will have the three that we currently have and uh, three more bus charging stations with room to grow that um, charging infrastructure. The charging system though, the reason I bring this up is, well, it looks great, so go by and check it out, the new parking lots because um, of the landscaping and everything. Um, but also that just to give you a heads up that because we need to move those electric charging station for the buses, um, that those electric buses won't be running for six to eight weeks while that um, gets done. 
so that's really the update with the base master plan as we see it today. Um, the other thing, Brett brought it up a little bit. Um, we have now put the CRISA money, kind of that will go in the bank. And the next conversation is about the ARPA funds that um, are passed down through PSRC, which most people are aware of. Um, at this point, I have not heard anything from PSRC. So we are still waiting you know, for that uh, first meeting. I'm guessing that um, it will go through the operations policy board this time as it typically does. Um, I haven't seen the agendas. I checked them just the other day and they're, they're, the agenda wasn't out yet. So just look forward to the conversation about the ARPA funding. And those are my two updates for today. And that'll conclude my report. Thank you. Great, thank you, Sue. Yeah. All right, we're now going to do from informational board items. Um, I just want to report that the next Executive Finance Committee meeting will be held Thursday, May 20th, beginning at 3 p.m. Um, I'd now like to call on Commissioner Keel. Commissioner Keel, are you ready for your sound transit update? Um, yes, I just want to just say very quickly that um, our work with Sound Transit uh, around realignment is, is continuing. Um, in the um, this coming month, our board meeting will have some more discussions about realignment. Uh, I, I, um, I think it's the way is getting clear, the lines are being drawn about, you know, what are the particular issues that the board is going to have to tackle in order to, to come up with a, a resolution to all of that. So um, just uh, a lot more work to be done. Great. Thank you, Kent, and thank you for your leadership um, on that issue as well. All right, and I'd like to call on Commissioner Marty Campbell for the PSRC transportation update. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I was not able to attend the last meeting, but I was able to get a rundown of what we discussed. Um, there was a uh, Federal Highway Funds Administration that got approved. I'll come back to that. And then there were breakout sessions uh, related to the regional transportation plan that was focused on safety, uh, good discussions around safety improvements and needs throughout the region and what that means to all of us. Uh, of note of the federal uh, funding for Pierce County that got uh, approved for Pierce Transit is uh, clean fuels bus replacement and expansion and I believe that is $960,000 uh, to the organization to help with the uh, clean fuels bus. So uh, replacement and expansion along with several other projects around our various communities. Uh, our next meeting is this Thursday uh, and is actually an extended from nine to, to noon. Uh, and we are tackling several big uh, funding uh, and funding programs coming up and looking actually at some trends at survey information. So if there's anything with that, I will bring it back next month. Thank you, Chair. Great. Thank you very much, Marty. All right. Um, I'd like to just know, are there any commissioners wishing to make any additional comments? All right. Seeing none, there is no executive session, exec, executive session today. And seeing no further business, I will entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. Move to adjourn. Second. I was like, if, if we can stay here if nobody wants to <laughs> second it. <laughs> all right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. All right. We stand adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice evening. Good night. Thank you.